This is part 1 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to use Link to SQL to retrieve data from a SQL Server database. But before that, let's understand what is Link to SQL. Link to SQL is an ORM framework, object relational mapping framework, that can automatically create strongly typed .NET classes based on database tables. We can then write Link to SQL queries in any .NET supported language. In between the application and the database, there is another component called Link to SQL Provider. So this component is responsible for inspecting the incoming link query and then translating that link query into corresponding transact SQL that the underlying database can understand. Link to SQL fully supports transactions, views, and stored procedures. But keep in mind, Link to SQL only supports SQL Server database. Databases like Oracle, DB2 are not supported by Link to SQL. Since Link to SQL models a relational database using strongly typed .NET classes, we have IntelliSense support, compile time error checking, and debugging support. Let's now look at an example of retrieving data from a SQL Server database using Link to SQL. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So here we've got this sample database, and within that we've got departments and employees tables. Here is the SQL script to create and populate these tables with sample data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now what we want to do is retrieve employees data and then display that within an ASP.NET web application. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a new empty ASP.NET web application project. So to this project, let's add a new item. Make sure you select data under installed templates, select link to SQL classes, and let's change the name of this file to sample.dbml. So now click on this link server explorer. So that's going to open up the server explorer window, expand data connections, and expand you know this connection to the sample database. And then once we expand tables folder, we should find departments and employees tables. Now, once we drag and drop these tables onto the designer, notice that this designer is automatically going to create entities for those two tables. So departments table um, has this department entity, an employee entity maps to employees table. And these properties maps to the columns in the respective tables. And also notice that there is an association between department and employees. So this association is modeled based on the primary key and foreign key relationship. So within the de employees table, department ID is a foreign key. So based on that relationship, this link to SQL designer is able to model the association between these two entities. So notice the arrow is pointing from department to employees, meaning there's a one to many relationship between department and employee entities. So a department can have one or more employees. So now to this project, let's add a web form. And on this web form, let's drag and drop a grid view control. So let's save everything. Now let's go to the code behind file. Now, when we dragged and dropped these tables onto the design, it has created these tables. And it has also placed a connection string within the web.config file. And if you look at the sample.designer.cs file, it has automatically created a class called sample data context. Now we'll discuss this class in detail in a later video session. For now, just understand that this class is the entry point into the database. So if we have to get anything from the database, we have to create an instance of this class and then use that to retrieve any data. So within the page load event, let's create an instance of that class, sample data context. Let's call this db context equals new sample db context. Now, this db context object has got employees property. So this property is going to return all the employees from employees table. And we also have departments property. So this property is going to return all the departments that are present in the departments table. Now let's retrieve all employees from the employees table. And then we have got this grid view one control. So let's set those employees as the data source for the grid view control. And then let's call the data bind method. So now when we run this, we should have 
all the employees displayed within the grid view control within this web form. Now let's actually write a link query here and let's do some filtering and sorting. Now instead of displaying every employee within the grid view control, what we want to do is from employee in db context dot employees where employee dot gender so we want only male employees and we also want to sort these employees by salary notice that we get IntelliSense now if we make any errors you know let's say for example salary if we misspell that we will have you know a compilation error right away okay so order by employee dot salary descending and we want to select all such employees so here we have got a link query right so let's actually run this and see if we get only the male employees so we got only male employees and they are sorted by salary in descending order. Now the interesting thing to note here is that, notice that here we have not written any transact SQL query. All we have written here is a link query. Okay, but SQL Server does not understand link query. It only understand um, transact SQL. So what's happening behind the scenes? How is the application able to retrieve data from the SQL Server database? So between the application and the SQL Server database, we have this component called link to SQL provider. Okay, so the application issues this query. Okay, the link query. So this link to SQL provider is going to inspect that query and then it's going to generate the corresponding transact SQL. And then that gets executed against the SQL Server database and the SQL Server database is going to return the matching employee rows back to this link to SQL provider. So this link to SQL provider is going to take those rows and for each row it has retrieved, it is going to create an employee object and then populate the properties of the employee object from that row data. So if we have, for example, let's say five rows returned, there will be five employee objects created and those five employee objects will then be returned to the application. The application just simply displays those um, employee objects. So that's how the link to SQL actually works. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.